Welcome back to the MSAG's COVID-19 series. In our previous videos, we've covered the timeline of the pandemic and the response to COVID-19 in the UK, as well as a few other European countries. In this video, we will build on your ability to answer interview questions that are asking for your opinion on the UK's response to COVID-19. Right now, we're going to consider some of the positive opinions about the UK's COVID-19 response. But in order to answer an opinion question comprehensively, you'll need to have both sides of the argument. So we'll discuss critical opinions in our next video. Pause the video and take a minute to answer this question. What was good about the UK government's handling of the COVID-19 pandemic? Supporting Opinion 1, the initial handling. The UK government can be praised for its early handling of the pandemic in January and February of 2020. On January 31st, the first two cases of COVID-19 were identified in England. They were quickly transported to a regional infectious disease unit. On the same day, British nationals were evacuated from Wuhan and quarantined at Aero Park Hospital. Some of you may remember this picture of a bus transporting a British national to a quarantine facility. The UK also required individuals who had flu-like symptoms returning from China, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, and Thailand to self-isolate for 14 days. The UK adopted a contact tracing approach. Contact tracing is a process of identifying, assessing, and managing people who have been exposed to a disease to prevent onward transmission. These people are called contacts. Contact tracing for COVID-19 requires identifying people who may have been exposed to SARS coronavirus 2, the virus that causes COVID-19, and following them daily for 14 days. The goal is to stop transmission by reducing the number of people who are circulating with the virus. Contact tracing is a fundamental part of outbreak control that is used around the world to prevent the spread of infections. This was effective at preventing the early spread of COVID-19 throughout the UK. Supporting opinion number two, the NHS and handling in April. Many have found the efforts of the government strong and successful in boosting the workforce as well as the NHS bed capacity. The UK government invited thousands of doctors, nurses, midwives, and other healthcare professionals who had recently retired to return to work. Professor Stephen Powis, National Medical Director for the NHS, said, I'm humbled by the overwhelming response by the thousands of former doctors returning to the front line and would like to thank everyone who has signed up. They will make a huge difference at a time when our country needs it most. On March 24th, the Health Secretary announced that 5,500 medical students would be brought into the workforce. This required medical schools to move final year medical students' graduation forward. These measures helped the NHS to meet the increased staffing demand created by COVID-19. In March of 2020, the UK government planned to build temporary critical care hospitals across the UK to provide extra critical care capacity if hospitals in the UK reached their limit. The first hospital to open was the NHS Nightingale Hospital London, which opened on April 3rd. Since then, seven NHS Nightingale hospitals have been built. On top of this, the NHS managed to free up 33,000 additional beds across the UK. They achieved this by cancelling non-urgent treatments, as well as working with the private sector to increase capacity. All of this was achieved in a relatively short space of time, and was an impressive achievement. The motive behind this was that there was a fear that the NHS could become overwhelmed. Supporting Opinion 3 – Financial Support to Companies and Individuals The UK government provided financial support to individuals and companies throughout the pandemic. One of the biggest measures taken was the Coronavirus Job Retention Scheme. This was introduced to help employers who could not afford to maintain their workforce as their business was affected by COVID-19. This was also known as furlough. The furlough scheme involved the government paying up to 80% of a furloughed employee's wages. At the scheme's peak in May 2020, 30% of the workforce across the UK was furloughed. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, said the furlough scheme has done what it was designed to do, save jobs and help people back to work where they want to be. The UK government also implemented economic stimulus measures to help companies and the economy as a whole. This included interest-free loan schemes for small businesses as well as loans for larger businesses. The UK government also provided £750 million of funding for frontline charities across the UK, 
including hospices and those supporting domestic abuse victims. Supporting opinion number four, research. There are two main branches of research. One branch is looking for potential treatments for COVID-19, and the other branch is looking at potential vaccines for COVID-19. The National Health Institute for Health Research funded the University of Oxford to launch a large clinical trial. This trial focused on possible treatments for people in the UK admitted to the hospital with severe COVID-19 infection. This was called the Randomized Evaluation of COVID-19 Therapy, or Recovery Trial. It involved all major UK hospitals and as many as 3,500 doctors, nurses, and research staff. On June 16, 2020, the recovery trial discovered the first treatment shown to reduce mortality in COVID-19 patients, dexamethasone. This was an extraordinary achievement and demonstrated the collective strength of the NHS. This trial is ongoing and will continue to report its findings. The UK government announced the formation of a new government-led vaccine task force on April 17th of 2020. The task force, led by Chief Scientific Advisor Sir Patrick Valance and Deputy Chief Medical Officer Professor Jonathan Van Tam, aimed to support the rapid development of a coronavirus vaccine by providing industry and research institutions with the resources and support needed. The UK government ordered 340 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines from several manufacturers, with the hope that at least one would prove successful. As of January 2021, two of these vaccines have been approved in the UK. The first was the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, and the second was the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine. Therefore, their strategy appears to be paying off. On top of this, the UK has given £500 million to a new global vaccine sharing scheme, designed to ensure that treatments for COVID-19 are distributed fairly across the world. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson also promised £340 million to the World Health Organization over the next four years. This is a 30% increase on previous years and shows that the UK government is committed to global public health. Supporting Opinion 5. First to approve the vaccine. The UK was the first country to approve a COVID-19 vaccine that was tested in a large-scale clinical trial. The Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, the MHRA, approved the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine on December 2, 2020. MHRA Chief Executive Dr. June Rain said, We are globally recognized for requiring high standards of safety, quality, and effectiveness for any vaccine. Our expert scientists and clinicians work tirelessly around the clock, carefully, scientifically, robustly, and rigorously poring over hundreds of pages and tables of data, methodically reviewing the data. This enabled the UK to start its immunization campaign, with Margaret Keenan becoming the first individual to receive the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. She was the first individual in the world to receive a COVID-19 vaccine outside of a clinical trial. That sums up a few of the key points that support the UK government's handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. But remember, to stay impartial when answering a question at your medical school interview, you'll need to show that you have an understanding of both sides of the situation. In our next video, we will cover the critical opinions of the UK government's COVID-19 response. Don't forget to continue your own research on this topic as it is constantly changing and updating. We'll see you in the next lesson.